بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله question was asked استاذ i regularly watch your videos how can we deal with the disease of ishq or uh, a passionate love towards the opposite sex this disease is now prevalent nowadays how can someone get rid of it if he has fallen into it First and foremost, uh, as a disease, I don't know if I would describe it as a disease uh, necessarily. If it was a, a disease, I would describe as if you had these feelings toward the same sex. Then I would consider that a disease. But here I would say that it's more in line with your fitra. It's more in line with your nature. There's not one of us who escapes more than likely those desires for the opposite sex that we especially as men and so with that being the case uh we have to look back to the prophetic advice on how to deal with these things on how to deal with controlling our passions and as you mentioned you said passionate love and so i would argue that perhaps it's not love but perhaps it's passionate desire and love and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best has different attributes than just pure desires perhaps you may love someone but you may not desire them in that way and very often we find that we desire someone or desire people but we may not have love for them so we do need to distinguish between those two or i'd say it's important to distinguish between the two and we know that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh gave the prophetic advice and command on what to deal with the inclination and how to forge or place one's passion in the appropriate place and context and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ya ma'ashir al-shabab man istata'a minkum alba'a falyatazawwaj the prophet sallallahu rabbi wa sallamuhu alayhi said o youth those amongst you who are able to marry then they should marry. And then the Prophet sallallahu described the other steps which is fasting if you can't marry and so on and so forth. And as we mentioned prior in our study of this hadith that alba'a that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned is uh, that the scholars differ over its meaning. Some of the scholars say that alba'a that it refers to the physical ability that you have the sexual prowess akramakum Allah or you know that physical ability and some describe that ba'a as the uh, financial ability and perhaps and i believe and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that it's really both of those things you know it's 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 all inclusive and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that you should have the ability to take care of a family and you should have the um uh you know the physical prowess uh you know to be able to uh you know attempt to satisfy your partner or partners if you are marrying more than one wife and so this is very important but getting back to the crux of what you're saying uh, what i believe that you're asking about and that would be that it's very important for one to limit your environment. So if you are what usually causes this or stimulates this more is the environment you're in. And that yes, you're going to go through natural inclinations of your desires and your, you know, you want to act upon your desires and you want to do that in a halal fashion because you're a Muslim and you're trying to strive to be on khair. And so the only way you can do that really is by marriage if you're unable to do so then you need to also take in put in perspective your environment and what you're watching if you're watching 
television or you're watching the uh, on the internet, the things that you see, you're going to see women, you're going to see uh, women in all kind of um, with and without garments. And so these things are obviously going to entice and increase your desires. They're going to entice you and they're going to increase your desires. So you have to be uh, conscious of what you're putting into yourself. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to lower your gaze. So you're going to need to practice that when you go out on the street. You're going to need, those things are there for your maslaha. They're there for your benefit. Because being unmarried and ha not having a way to deal with your shahwat, by being in those environments, you, it's almost as if you're torturing yourself. You're going to be watching and torturing yourself. You're going to be out on the street, torturing yourself. You're going to be in various environments, harming yourself. So, the Prophet said, La darar wa la dirar, as we just studied in the, the qa'idah, qa'idah fiqiyya. There's no harm and there's no reciprocating harm. So part of that harm, this is a harm, a darar ala nafs. This is a, a harm on, upon yourself. So you need to be able to limit your environment and protect yourself in that, so that those things don't increase you and heighten your sensitivity. And you need to strive to go towards the halal means to get married. That's very, very important. And this generally tends to be a case uh, with the men. The women generally tend to be better at controlling themselves and being able to be patient than men. However, the nature of people are changing because people are so hypersexualized uh, and, and so on and so forth uh, around the world. Don't think this is a Western issue. And that's one thing that's very important, which is a misconception. Everybody wants to blame the West and this, but I live in Saudi Arabia, one of the more conservative societies in the world. And no, I'm sorry, it's an issue that's out of control around the world and it just manifests itself in other ways. And in, in the same way, Allah is that. So, with that being the case, it's very important to limit your environment, strive your best. And the last thing I will say with regards to this is directing your energy into positive. Of course, best would be if you can do talib al ilm but also you need a physical. I'm the kind of person I can't just go to my books and just that. I've done that in my life, but now I'm at a different stage. It's very important to me, my physical health as well. So I'm a kind of a balanced person. I like to physically, I love, as you see, I like to go outdoors, I love to hike, I love to bike, I love to do whatever. I wanna try snowboarding, I wanna do all kinds of stuff in the future, bi'idnillah, okay? So you need a positive channel. And when you look at a lot of those super athletes that many of the people like, whether it be football players, whether it be MMA fighters, whether it be weightlifters and bodybuilders, they have to direct, you know, I, I like to follow a lot of bodybuilders. And when you listen to the way they, ha they train in order to make a cut right here, in order to, you know, define themselves, that they have to be, they are so focused that that is their number one priority. Even though a lot of them are on disbelief, that they focus their energy on that and even restrain themselves sexually and physically with their girlfriends or whatever or their wives or whatever they put that on the side because that is their priority they're carving themselves and so you've got to have positive uh positive ways to direct your energy to help balance all of that if you love to skateboard or you love to mountain bike or whatever you like to do or you like to box or you like to you know wrestle or whatever you know do the halal things in a halal environment and strive your best to put your energy into that positive. And, and, and something I benefited, I listened to a little bit of the podcast. Someone shared with me a podcast of uh, Muhammad uh, uh, Mufti Munir. <clears throat> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. And it was a very nice podcast. One of the brothers in the UK who has a podcast, and I don't, I'm not familiar with all the things going on out there and the names of different things, but the brother has a very nice podcast. Anyhow... And one of the things he said there, and he was talking about, really, he didn't mention specifically, but he was saying a khafa dararain. He was saying that, that he was mentioning the importance of that qaida and that, that uh, taking the lesser of the two evils. So, for example, being in the West, okay, uh, maybe some people, they need, they go to the gym and the gym is mixed and there's music and stuff like that. That's not 
saying it's permissible or anything to go in that environment, but that is a better environment if that helps that person keep them away from going to the club and other things that they're so focused into their energy, into something that has, you know, some maslaha, some good positive things, and it has some evil as well. That's better than going to, and it keeps them away from a greater evil. And that's the point. That's that thick. That's that qaida. That's that, that, those thick principles. And so it's very important. My point being, bringing it back on home, is that very important to focus your energy on something positive. Something positive you like to do that may be physical or whatever. If you're deep into crossword puzzles or you're deep into something else, then do it, or you're a good, strong student of knowledge and keep it focused on your, your, your talab. Whatever the case is, you need to be balanced and you need to have some other ways to direct your, especially that physical energy and so forth, to help you stay away from the muharamat. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. In the shaitan, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Muhammad.